Hey everyone, it's Billy Hell with Billy Hell Leather, and I am surrounded by my sewing machine. This is a Cowboy 3200. We're about to be visited by my lovely girlfriend, Nellie. What's happening, Nels? What's going on, young lady? So anyway, um, if you follow my YouTube channel, you know that I make holsters and belts and all kinds of things. Usually I just make what I want to make. And so one thing that I haven't been doing is making gun belts because I just can't bring myself to stitch all those stitches. And this was a pretty big investment. I had to find some things that I wasn't using anymore and I was happy to find out that that number came up to enough to buy a Cowboy 3200. I dealt with Ryan, Neil, and uh, he hooked me up. One thing I did do, FYI, is uh, instead of paying to have it shipped all the way to my house, I had Dayton Freight ship it to their Nashville facility, and then I said, hold it there, and I'll come pick it up, and it fit in my uh, excursion, all these boxes. And so that saved me about $130, I think. And with that money, I actually got the roller and some of the other pieces on the sewing machine that I wanted and uh, it took me all of an hour to go get it and come back. So something to think about when you're ordering yours. So I thought what I would do is start cracking these boxes open and as I built the thing, I would show you what it took to build it. That is all. I guess we'll cut and I'll start cracking open boxes and when I get to a place where you might want to see how it works or how it goes together, I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've cracked open not all the boxes, but the big flat boxes. And what we have here are legs, and the rollers are pre-installed, nice. And then here is the sewing machine top. And what's awesome is underneath, it's all hand-drawn with notes and things. I'm not sure what that is yet, but well, I took a picture of it. I'll show it now. One other thing I'm super excited about, you would think I would be super excited about the sewing machine, which I will be, but at this very moment, this light, which was included, it's an LED. It is awesome. And let me tell you why I know it's awesome. Because at my workbench, I use two lights. So as you can see, I have one here and one on the other side. And so what I do is these are LED lights, as you can see. And I will swing one on this side of my leather. And then I'll swing one on the other side of my leather. And that way, when I'm tooling, I'm able to see both sides of the, you know, two, I'm not blocking light with my arm or my hand because I have two light sources. These were the coolest, most bendy things I could find um, to do this with, and I like them, don't get me wrong, but holy smokes, this light is of a whole other territory of brightness. Check it out. That's crazy. I might have to, to grab a couple of more of these for the workbench. Pretty awesome. Okay, we're going to continue on now, and I guess what I'm going to do is break open these other two boxes, and I bet there's some instructions in there, and I'll start building the platform, and then I guess we'll put in our gas pedal and brake pedal, and it's not really a brake pedal, and uh, get it going. So that is next. I'll say neat went right out the door, but I have figured one thing out. A lot of the drawings and markings and words on the bottom of your tabletop are instructions on where things go. So in the uh, box, I did find photos of an assembled unit and I found instructions, verbal instructions on what to do. Uh, there's no actual photographs of step-by-step -step build. So I'm going to attempt to do that in this video. So what we're gonna start with, I'm using my light by the way, to light the project. Once again, I still think it's awesome. I'm using a lovely crescent wrench and right here, right there, there are two bolts and it says table legs. So what I'm gonna do is tilt this up and screw these table legs on. And then at least at this point, hopefully that's the right uh, first thing to do. And I'll have a station at that point to start working and building off of. So I'll do that and jump back in. Okay, so the legs are on. Now in the instructions, it says to put the pedals on first, but I felt like I had to have, I had to have a, some sort of distance and all that stuff. So I might have done this ahead of time, but this is how I did it. I had to start somewhere. Okay, so next I'm gonna figure out how to put the pedals on, which I don't understand yet because I don't see how they're going to fit. But I'm gonna let you know and take a picture and show you after I figure it out. 
So the flat metal piece and the corresponding bolt that went through it were on actually in reverse of how you could install it. So I pulled them off and you're looking at the pedal piece now. I took the flat piece and the only way to get that in that slide there is to slide it in, move that rubber piece and slide it in from the end, line it up. And then you want to bolt it all together. And the other thing you want to be aware of is when you slide that rubber piece back on the end cap there, it needs a little space. So you want to make sure before you tighten it up really well that you'll have room for both sides. So I guess if you wanted to, based on this design, you could slide that foot pedal forward if you needed to, back wherever you needed to want. I will say that at this far back, it is a little close in. So you might want to slide that up. I mean, you don't have to mount it right where I mounted it. I actually had to slide it up slightly. But uh, in the future, I may loosen this up and slide it a lot farther up, more uh, closer to this leg that you see on the left-hand side. There you go. It's on. So it was fairly easy to put this cross member on. And there's four bolts. This uh, was obvious which way it went on with the back side, the solid side, facing out the back side of the machine. Uh, the, the two bolts are already there. I pulled them out, screwed them back in, all good. Uh, one thing I'll note is it appears that this is supposed to live closer to the pedals and not the four on the top, although I don't think it would fit those anyway. So it's pretty obvious where that goes. Next is the reducer motor, and right here on the board you can see three holes and text written with a pencil noting that that's where that goes. I really uh, think there's only one way you can actually put that on, so I'm going to put the screws in from the top. I'll verify that's the way to do it and then tighten them from the bottom, and then that'll be on, and we'll move to our next phase. Or actually, and then I'll show you that installed, and then we'll move to our next phase. Okay, so it's installed. I didn't install it tight because I see that it's adjustable, and I have to think that it's somehow going to correlate with the machine. So it's on tight enough to live there until I lock it down. Also, I have a photo of uh, how I place the screws through the top, or the bolts through the top, and uh, then I just laid this on top and finger tightened my nuts down. So now we move on to the next phase. Okay, so installing the on and off switch was no problem. The screws are in there. It says what is supposed to live in that spot, so I took a screwdriver and Pull the screws out and put that thing on so she's good to go. And now the next part. Okay. Lifting weights finally paid off. I was able to retrieve that from that box right there. I had to have my son come down and he held the box while I lifted. I always lift with your legs and not with your back. Pretty sure that's how it goes. Before I got it out, I just wanted to show it to you. You know, it's kind of peeking out of there. So there's the heart of the machine. The reason we're all here, the reason we're all going to lay a large amount of cash down to no longer hand stitch things when we don't have to. So when you see this next, if everything goes well, that will be on the upright table. All right. Check back. Maybe the most exciting part of the video coming up. I don't know. Sorry. One more shot. Pretty. It's awesome. It's manly. Okay. Back to work. All right, all right, all right. It's on. Um, I will say, maybe not a two, maybe not a one man job. Maybe this is a two man job. I did it by myself. But if you have a bad back, if you want to safeguard against having a bad back, uh, getting this out of the foam was tricky too. It's just like it suctioned in there. It was really hard. But I got it out. One thing I'll notice, and I'll take a, a close up of this with my camera. All the cowboy machines I've ever seen say cowboy and red paint on the machine. This has a like a bronze plaque. Definitely an upgrade. So she's in. She's bolted in. Oh, one more thing I'll say. You can't just set this thing on the table and then go get your screws or your nuts and your bolts because that's not how it works. You better have those nuts and bolts and, and everything, the hardware you need to mount this to the table, like next on the table next to the machine if you're doing it by yourself because it is going to tip forward 
fall and then you're going to break your new Cowboy 3200. So I had mine nearby and I did the rear back first and then the other three were simple. I used the uh, included uh, tools to tighten that up and so I guess next there uh, we're not done we're just at the best part but you know I have a whole box full of things I need to get on this machine so I'm gonna go through that now so I'm just gonna point out some of the things that I put on the machine here one is the uh, thread spooler it's not attached yet basically what you do is you screw it in close enough to the belt that you can disengage it and then uh, flip a switch and engage it and this worked great I used it pretty quickly and I installed the drawer simply slid that in which actually comes in very handy for all the things I have like feet and little tools and things like that and then we have the uh, bobbin holder which goes right in and then we have our servo motor which I just pointed at and uh, that's it and after that she's ready to sew so here's some accessories that came with my unit like I say I saved on shipping and used that to get uh, a few things and we'll talk about this at that in a second but you do get four bobbins one's on the machine and then I received this. I thought maybe that was a hummingbird feeder. Turns out it is a thread waxer. I see how they go on, on uh, the 4500. I'm not sure how that actually works on a 3200, and I have not used it. So then there are a couple of more things here. I'm not exactly sure what they are. I think possibly this is for piping, like on a seat. And then I also uh, got the singular feet that allows you to stitch closer to the edge or the roller wheel and I have switched over to one of these for my gun belts and my holsters that's a stock spring you don't actually need that unless you go to a lighter leather this is another piece I think is for piping I don't know this is the best thing I bought so if I had to buy just two things out of this it would be this wheel which allows you to roll the leather and keep a, a straight line and then uh, one of the walking feet that actually keeps that stitch closer to the wheel those two things I use all the time so these are accessories and I actually have them installed now and that's it all right we're gonna get off the tripod for this chain business so still being lit by the provided LED by the way uh, this is your gas pedal or the go pedal the slow pedal the fast pedal and that goes right there. It's pretty obvious it's the exact length you need to go there. This young lady raises your foot. Once again, I'm a new owner to the 3200, so. But that chain is very long, and obviously, let's come around here, comes up through the table in the frame and hooks here. I tried and tried to push that through from the bottom up, and ultimately, I got a piece of wire and, and put the wire down and fished it out that way. Also, here's a good shot of this thing. Also, let's go under the table while we're here. So, a lot of the stuff that's under here is now covered up, but I'm going to wheel her around. As you can see, there are notes. This goes here and these go there. And so um, this is all here to help you put the machine together and make sure you're going the right places with everything. Your power switch and this piece here I talked about just a second ago. So next we're going to get this on. I've got to think it's like a bicycle chain and you just roll it on there but I'm going to make sure I do that right to keep it right and I'm not sure what happens. But here we are. I mean, it looks like a Cowboy 3200 to me. So I have ordered some thread to practice with, and this is from the Thread Exchange. So I wanted some colors, and I also wanted to uh, try some smaller sizes in case I wanted to do thinner leather. And then that will teach me how to adjust the tension, which is on, um, I believe Ryan has a video on that as well. So anyway, here's my... Here's my uh, winder, 
and I haven't tried it yet, but I have it simply screwed in to the table as I discussed earlier. And everything's hot. The power switch works. The uh, all the foot levers work. I do need to uh, take this and slow it down a little bit because I find it is too fast out of the box for me. But I'm a newbie, and so here's my little pitiful light I'm using for now. Um, I'm learning about the bobbin and all that good stuff, but it's all put together. Hopefully this video helped you. Uh, just, you know, I, I had no idea what to do, so my goal is to make a video to help somebody who was new to the Cowboy 32, or maybe even a larger Cowboy version. This might help as well. So anyway, we'll go back to my lovely, well, maybe we won't, but I'm Billy Hell, Billy Hell Leather. This is where I operate. Here's my new uh, study guide, the Cowboy user guide and uh, this is where I spend all my quality time other than when I'm with my family or playing the guitar so all right all right so it's installed I've got it next to the wall all is good I actually stitched that belt which I've had for a long time waiting for the appropriate moment when I wanted to stitch a whole belt and the Cowboy 3200 provided that for me and so I'm excited to make more belts and guitar straps and journal covers and holsters and all the other things I want to put together. There are things to be learned before you get going here. You need to watch videos and learn how to thread the needle. Um, what could happen if your thread gets tangled? Uh, how to sew forward, how to sew reverse, how to hit the right pedal to raise up your feet so you can move your belt around to make a turn. Every little thing must be done right or the machine won't sew correctly. You can't sew off an edge. You can't uh, sew with the foot in the up position. There's a lot of little things. All you need to do is go, I would say, go buy some cheap leather and sew, 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 sew. Make some lines. Act like you're really making a knife sheath. And uh, after, I, and I'd say by day two, I felt good. And by day three, I was actually sewing like a normal person. But this is about putting the Cowboy 3200 together out of the box. So I think we did that. It's a long video, but if you're going to drop the cash on this thing, you might need this long video to make you feel better about what you're going to do when the thing arrives. I want to thank Ryan. Uh, he got on the phone with me. He actually called me uh, when I was having some issues. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. I am going to provide links to Ryan's shop in the uh, description. And that's it. Billy Hell. Thank you guys. I have some uh, leather tips coming out on this channel. So hit the subscribe button and I'll show you the things I use uh, to help me be more productive, work faster, and in, have more enjoyable time while I'm tooling my leather. Y'all have a good day. Enjoy your